Hi, this is Beth with a little bit of Beth. Today I want to talk to you about something I've been thinking about for quite a while. I refer to it as the leadership hole. It is the place where people spend so much time learning the nuts and bolts of leadership, the tasks, the strategies, what you should do, performance evaluation, how to hold people accountable, how to do time slips, how to code expenses, all this type of stuff that you have to know. But the place that you, there's no training, there's no time for discovery is what's in that hole in the center, right? It's in my mind, the place where you learn about what your own leadership presence is and how um, your leadership chemistry and chemistry with the other people around you either helps you move forward or creates roadblocks and barriers to success. Um, just yesterday, I was on a executive coaching call with one of my long-term clients. And in the previous call, he was telling me about this member on the leadership team that he's on, um, a colleague of his, a peer, that uh, everything about her is like fingernails on the chalkboard for him. The way she communicates, the way she problem solves, the way she leads her team, all of those things get under his skin. And then he's not showing up that well. He's particularly not showing up that well with his own team, right? And now he's manifested this environment where people on his team are actually spending time whining and complaining about how hard it is to work with her team. We spent a lot of time talking about this. And um, in our coaching session, he really took some looks, uh, deep looks into what's his learning style? What's his communication style? How is he showing up? He was preparing, actually, and he was pretty adamant about having a conversation with her around the things that he believed she should be doing differently. That would not be my counsel or my advice, but that was what he really was invested in doing. So I gave him some questions to think about and ponder between his last call and this call and some ways to think about if he wanted to move forward. Well, when we got on our most recent call, he said to me, I have had a gigantic shift. I'm like, ooh, tell me more. He went on to tell me how he really began to think about some of the things we had talked about. And he began to really realize that yes, the only person he can manage is himself. And yes, it is not a conflict with her as a human being. It's a discrepancy in their chemistry, in the way that the two different work styles, the two different learning styles, the two different leadership styles conflict and cause friction. But neither one is necessarily good or bad. He said to me, you know what I realized, Beth? That in my leadership group, there are a bunch of people with divergent strengths, differences in talents, differences in skills, and differences of approaches. And it suddenly dawned on me that mine isn't necessarily right or wrong. Hers isn't right or wrong. They're just different. He go, I said, how does that feel to you? What does, how does it feel different now that you suddenly have this awareness? He said, all of a sudden, I don't feel so bothered by her. I'm actually a little more curious about how she leads, how she communicates, how she gets her work done, what her processes are. I'm like, oh, that is so interesting. He goes, but you know what the big thing is? The big thing is when I had a team meeting the other day and my team started whining and complaining and trying to throw darts at her team, I said to them, time out. 
this stops here. This is not appropriate. It's not okay. And I know that I allowed it in the past, but I've learned better because of some coaching work that I've been doing. I've learned better tools and strategies, and I understand that we all bring different approaches and different strengths, and it doesn't make any of us wrong. Holy mackinoli. I wanted to reach through the phone and hug him, but I didn't because that's not appropriate. But I did want to, and I commended him upon that. The, the thing that most stuck out to me is that um, he allowed himself to be vulnerable in front of his team and to say, I used to do it this way. I used to allow this, but now I've grown and I've changed. And that's not going to be okay anymore. That's not going to be acceptable anymore. Wow. He, I'm telling you, this young man is going to take the world by storm. I really believe that because of his leadership presence, because of his understanding of his leadership chemistry, and his willingness to be vulnerable, to learn and grow, to adapt and change as he learns new information, he is going to go far fast. He participated in the Navigating Challenging Dialogue Skills Training. He participated in executive coaching. He reads everything that I send him. He listens to my podcast. He listens to my blogs. And he has several other mentors and several other pieces of information that he's putting it all together. And then he's taking action to be and to show up in the way that works for him and in a way that's about self-awareness, growth, and improvement. Oh, I just, I'm so delighted. When I first met him six months ago, he was so stressed out. He was so burdened. He was so uncertain of himself. Um, he was trying to force people to do exactly what he wanted them to do in the exact way that he wanted them to do it. And he was having conflicts all over the place. So that's my story for today. If you're doing every kind of leadership training you can get your hands on and reading every leadership book you can find, but nothing is talking about self-awareness, emotional intelligence, what your leadership chemistry is and how you're showing up, then I'm encouraging you to think about coming to the Navigating Challenging Dialogue Leadership Certification. I think you're going to find it's different than anything else you've participated in. All right, until next time, this is a little bit of Beth.